Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to this presentation of the ECL Elite Division right here on Sports Gamer. I am Tuki, joined this time out by one Mr. B Major for what promises to be one hell of a broadcast here as we continue on with the quarterfinal round of the playoffs. First and foremost, it is great to have you here, sir. Very much excited for this broadcast. How are you doing today? Doing great, Tugi. Happy to be here. And how fun is it? We get some great games yesterday, three of the four going to overtime, all of them being decided by a single goal. And then we follow it with El Clasico, Havu, and Fralunda. There is nothing better than that. Usually a finals matchup, but we'll get it a little bit earlier this time with them being the three and the six. And as more things change, more things stay the same. Both of these teams still championship contenders, just meeting up a little bit earlier than what we're used to seeing. You mentioned it yesterday. There's a reason why we call it Marathon Monday. After all, three out of four games going to overtime. And uh, that's any indication we could certainly see the same thing today. As mentioned, we have what was once upon a time a perennial championship matchup. Havu Gaming and Fralunda, their first two games of their best of seven being played today. And of course, to wrap up the broadcast, we'll have our final opening round matchup. It is IQ. Taking on Feriestad, the battle of the four and five seeds. That one's going to be very interesting as well. A full look at the bracket and, of course, what the situation happens to be on yesterday's broadcast. We saw number one seed H-Reds take the first two games against Goons in overtime. An incredible start to that series. And the two seed, Sawo Esports, down two to nothing to seventh seeded Granites. We looked at that matchup and said, you know, if there were to be an upset, that might be the one. And so far, it's looking like it might happen. Yeah, and granted, kind of one of those sneaky teams this season that maybe you're a better team than what that seventh seeding kind of projects. Obviously, so tough to make it into the playoffs in the ECL Elite Division, but you have to remember some of those additions that they made from Fediesta, especially on the D-pair of Laminant and Fury, and then Antonio Mannon as well. This is a team that we kind of knew could be sneaky coming in. They have proved that through with that 2 to nothing series lead. We'll see if they can see that through or if the two seed in Sawo can make that comeback happen. Now, it is worth noting as well, Tuesday is normally our day for Pro Division coverage. Want to give out a shout out to what is currently going on in that playoff situation as well as the quarterfinals are also underway in our Pro Division featuring the top two seeds. They were both one seeds out of their groups, but Reality Check and Yippie Voskula both currently trailing to the underdogs in that particular matchup. We're still waiting for the other two series to get underway. So, of course, right here on Sports Gamer, we will continue our coverage of the Pro Division, but we have to keep our focus on the Elite Division here as well. It's a tough balancing act when we have so much going on throughout all of our divisions. Yeah, and that just kind of goes to show you the action that we have. And like you said, Tuki, kind of surprising to see both number ones for both groups kind of going down, especially a team in Yip Yavasco trying to make it back to the ECL Elite Mountaintop. Obviously, the history that they have as a team, kind of surprising to see them down two to nothing to a no Rex gaming team that was almost not in the playoffs and kind of had to scratch and claw their way at the last week to get in. They've been impressive, had an upset last week, looking to make another one and even a bigger one with a big name team and a number one seed in Yippie Vasco are trying to defeat them if they can. So with that, we will switch our focus back here to our opening matchup of this broadcast. Again, it is Havu Gaming against Fralunda, and needless to say, the numbers uh, kind of speak for themselves in terms of how close of a series we expect this to be. Oh yeah, and you know you're always going to get pretty even-based numbers when you get these two teams. The goals for only separated by three, and the goals against only separated by one. These two are always in the top three or four, and really any statistic you can think of that would reign for positive things. And this season, no different. They know how to score goals. They know how to hold it back in on the other end. And even more importantly, these two teams know each other very, very well. They split the regular season series one to one so they both won one time against each other this season now they're gonna have to do it a few times here to try to move on to the semifinals get you all a look at the lineups here for this particular matchup as well very excited for this as it is the six that you would expect to see for both of these sides for havu gaming it is wiggleson dominoiti and captain flyer kungan on that right wing side nasa stelli and villicoon on defense hans Salino. 
between the pipes and four for Linda HC. Playmaker, Potsloff, and Eki. Tamo Loimo on defense. Kape between the pipes. And that brings us, as always, to our first comparison here. It is the center matchup that we have. I've had the privilege of calling this particular matchup on numerous occasions. It is Dominoity against Potsloff. And again, the numbers kind of speak for themselves here. Yeah, two guys that know each other very well, like you said, Tugi, and can really make a difference for both of these two teams. We know how centers can kind of dictate that the way the play goes, especially on the offensive end. But when you get two guys like this in Dominoiti and Patslav, not only two centers that are really in the upper echelon of their position in the league, but know each other so well, it really brings for that interesting matchup because you kind of know each other's tendencies. You know what to expect out of one another. And you have to remember, these are two teams that have played each other in finals appearances multiple times. So these guys know what they're getting out of one another. And both of them will be absolutely huge in these series. We know what Potsloff brings with that forward trio that they have over for Lunda and Dominoiti, obviously one of the staples of that forward line of Havu for really years now. So it's going to be fun to watch those two go to action because you know they're going to make a huge difference down the middle for their teams. Like I mentioned the wingers, let's take a look at them now again. Wiggleson and Flyer Kungan for Havu, Playmaker and Eki on the Fralunda side of things. In this particular matchup, it really does intrigue me, the four-checking pressure that all four of these men can provide. And of course, as well with Eki, this season at least, you always got to keep an eye out for that net front presence. Yeah, Naki, he's one of the best, not just in the European scene, but in NA2, really just the best in NHL esports and able to being able to really establish that positioning in front of that. He is so good at being able to get those tip goals and earning that positioning to get himself there because the thing is, teams know that he has that ability to do that, but they can't seem to get him out of that area. It's kind of Eki's office there in front, and it makes it so hard as a goalie when you try to make those saves because there's not really a lot you can do about many of those deflections. So seeing him be able to do that compared to what Havu was able to do defensively, really going to be fun to watch. But do not sleep on Yeagleson and Flyer Kungan. We know what these two guys can do and what they are capable of doing. They will have a lot to say in this series, especially with the being round one and Havu with the pedigree they have. They're not going to be keen on getting bounced out round one. The defensive matchup next, of course, again for Havu, Nasu, Stelia, and Vilikun on the defensive side for Frontlunda, Temu, and Loimu. And it's been something that we've seen this season. Maybe point totals amongst defenders, not typically what we would have expected for some of these guys, but I'd say the numbers kind of match up for what we would expect out of these four. Oh yeah, absolutely. All of these guys just not able to do well defensively and able to kind of counteract the opportunities that the other team's able to get, but they can contribute on the offensive end as well. Both of these teams so good at being able to have that controlled breakout and good offense typically starts with good defense and the breakout is a really good part of that and Really the outlier out of this group, probably Vili Kuhn, 11 goals to 12 assists. You usually don't see a lot of defensemen in that double-digit goal tally, but he's really been able to put himself in that conversation. He is first in the league out of all defensemen in goals for in the regular season, while Loimu on the other end, first in assists. So both of these guys able to kind of help their teams offensively, but able to do it in different ways. It should be fun to see how that matches up with one another. Cause like you said, maybe not that point totals you'd usually see from defensemen, but all four of these guys are able to provide that for their teams. Last but not least, we have the goaltending matchup, and you mentioned it, of course, for Eki, but we also have Han Salino, fresh off of a nice little vacation down to Florida. He is back and ready to go head-to-head -head with arguably his greatest rival on the flip side, as it is Kape. Two of the best goaltenders that we have ever seen in a competitive sixes setting, but neither really posting the save percentages that you might expect, but... Goals against average, you know, obviously more of a team stat, both under two goals against, which always gives their team an opportunity to win. Yeah, and something that you mentioned was that save percentage number. You and Sin talk about it all the time. That 80% mark is ideally where you want to be at at a goalie. And usually Kape, one of the guys you would probably pencil in to be up there First, realistically, in that kind of mid to low 80s percentage, but this season, not so much. He does have six shutouts to his 
record though and 21 wins as well so even though the save percentage not necessarily there for him he is a playoff performer and he has been known to make absolutely gigantic saves that has been able to win this for London team championships in the past and on the other end Hans Salino is splitting time with Sibelius throughout the season he gets the nod in this one he actually played both games against Forlunda in the regular season as well so this is not anything unfamiliar to him obviously he knows Forlunda very well these two goalies have played one another numerous times so it's going to be a lot of fun to watch because both Hans Salino and Cape have that ability to steal their team a respective game do not be shocked if they do that at least once here in this series for the respective squad Again, we've called it out. This is uh, typically a perennial championship matchup. No such luck this season for these two. This is, again, an opening round matchup where one of these two teams, needless to say, will fall very, very short of expectations and their hopes uh, for the season here today, needless to say. So, again, we are just a few moments away from Puck Drop to kick off this particular series. Again, a little bit later on, Feriestad and IQ, our final quarterfinal matchup, will begin as well. Four games today. Very excited to see how this goes. And, you know, the funny thing is you can sit there and look at every single person in this lineup and just talk about the history that they have within uh, the ECL. I mean, again, Cape, it's one of those things where, you know, all-time stats, we take a look at those on the website side of things. We know it factors in other things beyond just the ECL. There are not too many goaltenders uh, that have more wins than the likes of Cape at this stage. I mean, we've talked about him uh, to death in all aspects. He still leads the ECL in terms of shutouts, regardless of what tournament or what division it is. I mean, it's... It's the most highly touted matchup that we have here, and for good reason. Yeah, and that's why I think that El Clasico name kind of goes well with this. When you think of some of those teams, whether if you're a soccer or football fan, depending on what part of the continent you are on, you think Real Madrid, FC Barcelona, you think Boston and Montreal, you think Boston Celtics, Los Angeles Lakers, you think two classic teams that have really been a part of the history of the ECL and of really the NHL esports scene. And these two teams, whether it be different team names, they've been etched a part of that. They have helped build this to what it is. And it's not often you see them meet in round one. I mean, for Lunda being a three seed and Havu being a six seed, they're used to being number one and number two. But with how deep the ECL has been this season, you've seen teams like Sawo kind of be a little bit higher up than what they did in the ascendance of h res them being number one and then other teams like fedius that and iq having a little bit of better seasons than what we expected them to in terms of the rankings and the projections so these two teams used to being a little bit higher but hey we get a treat here in round one we kind of wondered if we'd get el clasico well we got it just a little bit earlier than what we expected but hey i think we are all for it and it's going to make a really fun series to watch and a really entertaining series to call i mean and again too you mentioned that uh, battle of four and five Neither of those teams uh, were projected by that preseason captain's poll to make the playoffs, yet it's the battle of four versus five. So a lot to prove in that particular matchup as well. Again, just a, a few moments away from puck drop. Game number one of this seven-game series, of course, that we will see continued a little bit later on in the week. Of course, we have a broadcast coming up tomorrow where we will continue to follow the action. And of course, this Thursday as well will be continued coverage of any series that requires it. There is, of course, the possibility of no games on Thursday if there were to be sweeps in every single series, which, uh, you know, we, we've thought in the past that might be the case, but so often we've seen, especially in that eight seed matchup, we've seen for to be the one seed before. I recall them taking on Northern Ascendancy and, and losing two games in that series. You never quite know what's going to happen in any particular matchup. But one more time here, we'll throw it to a look at the bracket. We do have a slight delay in terms of getting the action going, but looking at these particular matchups and how this might pan out, you know, we look at the action from yesterday, and again, I mentioned it, Goons taking H-Reds to overtime twice, so, so nearly walking away with the victory there. That series feels like it's far from over. And for Sawa, I mentioned a little bit earlier, and you brought up kind of the comparison that's out there a little bit uh, from a Yipivoskula from a few seasons ago, where they were the number one seed and are the only team not aimed H-Reds or for Lunda to win a number one you know, seed out of the regular season. In the time that I've been here, 
Yet here they are, trailing 2-0 to Granite. You'd expect that series to be far from over. But at the same time, when you have a team that really starts to make it known that, hey, maybe, just maybe, we could be a championship contender, once you get to the playoffs, that pressure is just at an entirely different level. Yeah, and you have to remember, too, with this Granite team, like we kind of mentioned earlier, they might be a little bit more talented than what that seven seeding brings. You have to remember, a lot of the guys on that Granite team were on a four seed Fettius that just last season, they made the semifinals. They have that playoff experience. We knew Granite was going to be a force to be reckoned with this season, but we just didn't know how that series would go with Stalwell, the way they have played, especially on the defensive end, only allowing about a goal a game in the 30 games that they have played. And Granite's been up to that challenge so far. Obviously, a lot more to be done. They've won both games by a goal, and it took overtime in another. So, Stalwell definitely going to have something to say. But when you put yourself in that 2 nothing series lead, that really gets you in a good position going into the next games. And Granite, they win one more. you got to like their chances with the way they've played. But like we said, Stalwell, a good team. They're number two for a reason cannot go in without saying that they have a little bit more to offer than what we saw yesterday, even with it being a close series. Again, now just a, a few moments away from puck drop. Game number one of this series, just awaiting the teams to match up here and really get things going. But in terms of this particular matchup, all the hype, all the talk, we can build it up. But I have a feeling we're still not going to be able to accurately predict what's about to happen because that just seems to be the case every time these two teams go head-to-head. -head. You never really know what you're going to get out of this particular matchup. So very, uh, very much excited to see how this one plays out. And, you know, it's funny because we've seen it already in this postseason. You think, okay, the team dominating possession. All right, let's let's put it in their favor. But then another team will burn them on the counterattack. It is the most unpredictable matchup that we could possibly have here in the playoffs, and it's still absolutely astonishing again <laughs> that this is a first-round battle. I mean, we've, we've talked about it now all through this broadcast, but this was the perennial matchup in the finals, and for so long it was, okay, it's these two teams in the finals, it's way too predictable until these two teams split up, and then you had someone like H-Reds last season claim that number one, you know, that, that top spot by winning in the postseason. They swept for Lunda in the final. And now again, like I said, the expectations for these two teams is to make the final and only one of them is going to make it out of the first round. It's insanity. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it so intriguing because like you said, these are two really proud teams. They have so much history and so much pedigree. They're used to lifting that trophy above their heads and being crowned champions. So one of these teams, like you said, one of them not even going to make it past that first round. And I don't even think that's something we can say about any of these teams ever. Have they ever been eliminated in the first round at all? I don't know if we can say that really about either of these two. Well, now, one of them have to be if they play each other in that first round. They did split that season series in the regular season one to one. So, like you said, to be unpredictable, not sure what we're going to get. But you get two teams like this, that makes it a lot more fun, to say the least. You see what the teams are playing for as well. Of course, again, it is the new two-season format for UCL 22, our winter and spring season, all leading to the brand new grand final a little bit later on this year. Of course, again, if you make it out of the first round, you're guaranteed a little bit of prize money as well. So again, crazy to think that one of these two teams uh, won't be walking away with any bit of prize money. They're very much used to walking away with at least a little bit of cash in their pockets at the end of this. So, so much to play for, for these two teams. It is a brand new chapter to the most prestigious rivalry that we have here amongst the ECL. Very much excited to get this going and to see how this plays out. The teams are on the ice for Lunda in their home red. Havu in the road whites. El Clasico, a new chapter, begins now. A quarterfinal matchup, game number one. And we'll see how this plays out. Everything to play for for these two teams. As it is Havu trying to work their way through the neutral zone early and into an offside call. Now, BMH, that is, that is one of the things, of course, that we could end up seeing uh, throughout this matchup is just the battle of the blue line and how willing teams are to kind of break that defensive shell. Yeah, and something that we saw in the regular season between these two teams is that Havu got the better of the possession battle in terms of being able to establish the offensive zone time. They had 
over 3 minutes and 12 seconds of time on attack in the overtime loss, and over 4 minutes in the second game, which they won, so they were able to establish the zone versus Ferlanda pretty successfully there in the first two times they met. You know Ferlanda gonna lock things down pretty well, but Havu have to feel pretty good about their chances of being able to get into the zone rather comfortably, considering they were having success just a week ago as these teams played, about, about a week and a half ago or so. Absolutely, that was a uh, heck of a way to kind of you know wind down the season for these two teams as well as we'll see an offside, at least a delayed offside, from the dump and chase attempt. Let's see what we can do here. Of course, not surprised. We have a bit of a feeling out process. Here goes Flyer Kungen down that off wing side, a drive to the net. Wiggleson just running out of space. We're gonna get it back here though. Again, we will see just how much space these two teams have to work with through the neutral zone. It could be a bit of a, a tepid pace to this one. We'll see how it plays out. Right now for Lunda doing a good job on these breakouts. Good bit of patience from the defense. Eki nowhere to go. Billy Kuhn being hounded for the puck, but again, he's able to handle it well. Flyer Kungan not so much through that pressure. Great sauce pass from Eki. Now Playmaker down low in the corner. Still holding on to it. Hands it off to Eki, who kicks it back for the point. They move right back down to him. Good patience on display here. Playmaker back to the point. Kind of being held to the outside here, though, with nowhere to go. And it will be Havu regaining possession. Dominoiti, though, in a bit of trouble. He turns it over. He sauce pass. Oh, gets the rebound. He scores. The opening goal of this series. Who else would it be? Eki able to make things happen. One to nothing for Alunda. Oh man, and the two visitors from Tampa in on that one. Eki scoring on Hanselinho to start this series out. And what a shot it was there, Tugi. Just using that close course to his advantage. He said how he is so good when he's in front of that. But this time, not that typical tip camping in front of that play you may see from him. He just ripped it right past the goalie in Hanselinho and unassisted. Nevertheless, so for Lunda, gets the scoring star at one nothing. A great job from them on that play. Very surprised to see how that puck went in as well. Hopefully we get a, a bit of a replay a little bit later on as it, it looked like he was in good position to make the save. Ultimately did not happen. And again, now one to nothing lead for Frolunda in this one. Let's see how Havu managed to respond. In the past, we have seen Havu, you know, stick to a offensive strategy, whether it's uh, working or not. It was just their style. It's going to work if it doesn't. That's it, but at the, you know, in, heading into this season, we've seen their willingness to adapt. More dump and chase attempts, as we've seen already in this game. But here come Frolunda. Potsloff not able to work his way around. It will be Havu back in possession one more time. Of course, this incredible first round matchup. Game one of this best of seven. The action brought to you by our friends at Vilhelm, Kovalon Lockerty, and ST Hockey. Playoff run leading to March 4th and 5th. We are oh so close, as crazy as it seems, to the final. We have another offside call here with just five minutes remaining here in the opening period. Something that I really like that you mentioned there too is how Havu kind of doesn't back away from that aggressive style, but they are a team that when they decide to do it, they can throw a lot of different looks at you. Sometimes you'll see them kind of be aggressive and then pull back a little bit and go into that trap just to kind of throw you off and make you change the way you play and feel a little bit more uncomfortable on that breakout. We'll see if they do any of that here, but right now, aggressive on that four check. That's their best strategy as well, though. Good hit there by Loima to completely stifle the offensive effort. Habu, not much offensive zone time to speak of so far. They finally find a bit of space. Here's Flyer Kungan on that right-hand side. Good bit of protection. Wiggleson nowhere to go. He still fights for it. As Flyer Kungan with him, who sends it around the back of the goal. Dominoiti. D to D work there. One timer. Big stop by Cape. No major rebound, at least into a dangerous area. For Lunda, do ice the puck, though, as we approach the final minute of the first period. Yeah, and Havu, like you said, kind of able to establish the zone for the first time really all period long. And now they get an offensive zone faceoff. We'll see if they can maybe use the next 90 seconds to maybe get something going for themselves. They've been good on the dot so far. Off the tie up. Mouse Estelia gets it. Flyer Kungan shot blocked by his own man in front. Billy Kuhn not able to hold that one. Final few moments of the first. We'll see if Havu can get anything going. Falunda in possession in their own zone. Loimu risky. Nearly turns it over. Still fighting for it here. It is Potsloff who comes up with it. And he'll kill the clock. So Falunda strike first. Eki 
getting them on the board, although we'll get a look here at some of the physical play from Loyman. Yeah, and we know that he can throw the body around when he chooses to. Something one them pretty good at underratedly throwing the body around. But like you said, the story in this one, Eki being able to start the scoring out, as you can see the replay right there, wearing the gold helmet for a reason to get. He showed why they're on that play. But for a lot of that, I think period one goes to them. They got a vast majority of the zone time, it felt like. In terms of opportunities, but the stats wouldn't really tell you that one shot apiece two seconds separating these two in time on attack, but yet it just kind of felt like Ferlunda had the better chances almost in Havu, even if the stats don't really read that. So kind of a feeling out period there in the first 20 minutes. I would expect that to really ramp up in the second period as these teams start to kind of settle in and get comfortable with one another and open a few things up offensively. All right, here we go, everybody. We are just about ready to begin the second period. Again, the first game of two between Havu and Frolunda to kick off this opening round matchup. Again, a little bit later on, Farius that and IQ going head-to-head -head the first two games of their series as well. Havu in on the attack, but they turn it over. Villikun couldn't find the pass. Good bit of work there by Nasu Stelia to take that one away. You know, despite the opening goal for for London, it has been Havu, I'd argue, ever since, really kind of trying to force the issue. Get that offensive zone time, but so far so good from for London on the defensive side of things. Here is Dominointi now, sends it around for Wiegelson. Good bit of puck protection. Back to the point with Billy Coon, and again down low. Great movement from Havu. That shot save, rebound denied. Cape able to stop Dominointi on the doorstep. Want to stop that was. Here comes Playmaker, though. That sauce in front. Dangerous moment on the other side. Hanselino able to keep that one out. Nervous moments for both goalies to start the second period. Yeah, Tugi, we said that things would ramp up in the second period, and that is held true here through the first five minutes. Cape with his first wee big-time save of the game, and Hanselino makes one of his own on the other end. So things starting to kind of open up the more this game goes on. It's going to be fun to see if Havu can maybe tie this thing up or if Rolanda can break this game open a little bit more and extend their lead. Again, we have a, another stoppage of play here. We will not be surprised to see a high amount of offside calls. The way these two teams go, and again, it's one of those things, you know each other so well. Do you stick with what you know works, or do you try to change things up just because you know if there's one team that has you scouted better than anybody else, it's the opposition that you face here tonight. It's Dominoite trying to get things going here through the neutral zone, carries it in over the blue line, immediately runs into trouble. Covered for the moment by Flyer Kungan. Again, three people around him. Dominoiti has it, and Cape is able to swallow up that loose puck. It'll be another attacking zone draw for Havu, though. Yeah, and they've been pretty good on the dot so far. They lost that one earlier there at the end of the first period, but something they've been able to take advantage of in the past is being able to win those offensive draws and get those set plays. Off the draw, though. Clean win for Potsloff. But a loose puck kicks back to the neutral zone. Havu right back in possession. Wiegelson over the line. Wearing the golden helmet in this particular matchup. Signifying the team a leading score. And they score there. Flyer Kungan in front has tied this one up at one apiece. In the blink of an eye, Havu have their breakthrough. And it's the captain that does it there for Havu. One of the centered players that have seen everything of everything in this matchup and he gets the scoring started for Havu in this one and using that wraparound play to his advantage I was kind of going to their fault last week when they matched up against H-Reds this time Flyer Kugan says hey I can go around on a two and use that post he does it there and it ties it up one apiece in the second huge goal there halfway through the second whole new game playmaker back what a stop by Hanselino, wraparound bid denied as well. Crafty move there from Playmaker, trying to hit them with their wrap of their own. Flyer Kungan, nowhere to go at the red line. Eki in the attacking zone, pass intercepted by Wiegelson. Havu trying to get things going down the other way. Pass off the mark, difficult though for these defensemen knowing that you can run into trouble just like that. You have to try to make those back passes, they're tough place accurately on occasion. 
We'll slow things down here. Bilikou, again mentioned. One of the defensive leaders in goals. And again, nowhere for Nasa Stelia to go. It's got to be frustrating to get stifled like this when there aren't too many teams that can do this. Except uh, these two teams to one another, given the circumstances of this matchup. Dominoiti, again, has to drop that one back. And it's just a slow, almost suffocating style to just be worked back. Like, okay, we can't get over the blue line. We're struggling to get over the red line. We're struggling to get over our own blue line now. It has to be frustrating for an offense. As Loimu able to find Playmaker for Lunda, trying to get that lead back. Potsla. And down in the corner, now back to the point. That shot saved by Hanselina. Pops off again to Loimu in front. And he got Eki back there covering for him. Botsloff wanted that wrap around, broken up at the last moment. Wigelson, head of steam down that left wing side. Flyer Kunkin there to assist. Dominoiti pumped off the puck. And now it's Eki. Has Playmaker up ahead of him. Good puck protection from the winger. Back to the point and just wide on the blocker side. Eki for Playmaker one more time. Back to the point. Safe scores! It hit the inside of the pad and still found its way home. Loimu reestablishes the lead for Ferlunda. Loimu usually the disher on many of these plays. He had 29 assists in the regular season and only three goals. Well, there you have it. He scores a goal from the point right there. And unfortunately for Hans Alivio, just not able to get in that pad positioning to where it kind of just hit off of the inside left pad right there. Unfortunate there for Havu, but it goes to the benefit of Rolanda and a big goal with just 15 seconds left of the period. A huge moment there for Rolanda. Looked like it was going to be Havu's period, but a goal apiece sends us to the third. A 2-1 to lead intact for Rolanda. So we'll get another look at that Loimu goal. Yeah, and you can see it all started from down low and they worked it up to that point there in Loimu. Traffic and all about three Havu defenders were in that middle, but the puck is only so small and there was just that bit of space to fit that through and Loimu put it accurately enough to where he could squeeze that in. But Tugik, I think you said it best. That has to be pretty crushing there for Havu. You get a goal in that period. They play rather even and back and forth where teams haven't gotten a lot of opportunities for one another. And then with just 15 seconds left, Rolanda able to get a goal to take back the lead going into this third. We know how big that goals can be when they're scored in the last bit of the game and how much they can carry over in terms of momentum into the next period. So now Havu, after maybe being in a situation where you can go in tied in the third period with a clean slate, now you go into the next 20 minutes chasing the game, trying to come back after a late tally. Here we go. Third period just about ready to begin. Again, the first game of two to kick off this quarterfinal matchup. We'll have more coverage this Wednesday, of course, and if necessary, on Thursday as well. We'll wrap up the quarterfinals this week. Of course, again, a little bit later on, IQ and Feriostat play the first two games of their series as well. But we focus on this. Havu down by one. Again, this matchup, we'll say it numerous times and already have throughout this broadcast. Typically, a championship caliber matchup. But instead, we get in round one as the elite division continues to evolve and as other contenders, and of course now our defending champions, specifically in h -Reds, continue to emerge. They have Flyer Coogan here, pressured, great work there. Fence forced to help out. That was Tamu stepping up into the attacking zone while the rest of his team dropped back. Just goes to show the willingness that Verlunda have in terms of letting these defensemen jump up into the play. It certainly explains you know, some of the point totals and especially the goal totals that we have seen. But great work there by Wigelson. Back for Flyer Coogan. Dominoit, he throws one on him wide. Flyer Coogan off the back of the net. Ran out of space. Dominoiti tried to go back down low to him. Temu was there. Good pass to Eki. He's got a little bit of space. Passed in front and handled well by Villicun. It's Habu right back down the other way. Wiegelson for Nasustelia. Loose puck. Flyer Kungan denied by the blocker. We do have a delayed call. Power play incoming for Havu, the first of the game. Yeah, and Havu, they were not the best power play team in the regular season. Ninth ranked in the ECL division at 19 percent each of these two teams took two penalties against one another in their regular season matchup and neither of them scored a single power play goal we'll see if Havu can break that trend they're gonna have to do that here the one time this game 
Here's Wigglesen's shot, knocked down by the traffic in front and sent all the way down. At the start, Havu were looking for on this power play. Dominoiti dumps it in, interesting bounce, nearly poked in. Puck still alive and chopped up to Eki. They finally get it out. Interesting moment there where it looked like Havu would be able to maintain possession. They're already halfway through this power play. Great individual effort from Temu. To send that one all the way down. And uh, interesting moment there. It honestly looked like Nostostelia <laughs> kicked it away from himself. Didn't even see Villikun down in the corner. It's Dominointi in the zone here around the back to Flyer Kunga to the point. That shot blocked. Second chance perhaps for Villikun. Pass in front from Flyer Kunga broken up. We are back to five on five. This one to the point. A little bit of uh, incidental contact as it's ruled. And Havu will have to reset. Big opportunity falls to the wayside. It is a Potloff now. Loimu again trying to find that pass. Temu gains the zone. Dumps in that far side corner. We might just see the willingness to turtle up a little bit more from Forlunda. Forcing Havu to try to find a way to break through. Easier said than done. And... And again, that opens up room for the counterattack. They almost struck there. It's Flyer Kungan trying to drop back. Plea Maker was there, but now it's Billy Kuhn. Billy looking for the shot wide. Rebound is there. Dominoiti recovers it and kicks back to the point. D to D one timer. That one blocked by Eki. Great work. Has Plea Maker ahead, but just able to get a stick on it to take away that chance as you see a bit of the creativity from Eki. Willing to throw a different looks out there under seven minutes to play. Here in the third period, Dominoiti. Now Flyer Kungan again down low. It's another power play coming up for Havu. And this is going to be huge here for Havu. They weren't able to convert on that first power play. Got some looks in the cycle, but not a lot of shots on net. We'll see if they can maybe do a little bit of a better job of giving themselves some opportunities here on the second power plays. Now time kind of starting to become the enemy here for Havu. So God take advantage of this odd man chance while Furlanda gives it to you. What they can do. Dominoiti has gotten the better of the faceoffs at times in this matchup, but Potsloff gets it, cannot clear it. Great keep by Avilikun. To the point, Nasustelia has to go down low for Dominoiti behind the back of the net. Wraparound bid doesn't go, and the puck is sent all the way down. So again, another decent look, but not able to find that goal with five minutes to play and a little bit of trouble here on their breakout. Precious time winding down off the clock as Dominoiti Sends that one in. Temu able to send it right back out. 35 seconds on the Havu man advantage. Flyer Kungan in the zone. Finds Dominoiti to the point. Shot stopped by Kape. He made it look easy. Oh, and he did. And that's what is so fun watching these two goalies and Kape and Hansulio really go and face off against one another. They make those saves that are difficult for most goalies, look so routine and so easy. And when you're in a game like this that's close with a little time, so important to have a goalie that has that ability to do that. As Temu clears, Havu down 0 and 2. 0 for 2, we should say, on the power play. Huge opportunity lost, time ticking down. They dump it into that far side corner where Temu again is able to pick that one up. Dominoiti fights for it along the half wall. Tries to go around the back. Temu all over it. Great pass there by Playmaker to find Eki. Now it's Potsloff. Does he have the speed? Has help with Loimu. His drop pass. Nobody home except Flyer Kungan. They have a minute and a half to go in a regulation here in game number one. Dominoiti has nowhere to go. Flyer Kungan trying to get back to his feet. Great job by Nasustelia. Dominoiti shot. That one's knocked loose. Loimu fighting for it and clears the zone. He's in a foot race for it that he's going to win. Immediately pressured there by Billy Kuhn. Now it's Plea Maker below the goal line. 45 seconds to play in game number one. Nasustelia for Havu, looking for space. Found Wiegelson immediately double teamed. Potsloff able to get out of trouble. Gets that outlet pass to Eki Loimu, now over to Plea Maker, who will send it down and around with 25 to go, and Frolunda look to turtle up. Nasustelia for Dominoiti, nowhere to go. Hanselino heading to the bench. Flyer Kungan can't get it in an onside situation. Wiegelson looking, finds Dominoiti. Trouble at the line, still fighting for it. Wiegelson, nine seconds to go. Chance pass broken up. Plea maker dumps it out, and they should have time with 1.4 to go on the clock. It's not impossible to score from this situation. 
Oh, man. I mean, we've seen it scored with this amount of time a few times. Havu, though, going to have to get a set play off and quick. Ah, Sustelia in that hot seat. Pass across. Nobody home. For Lunda, take game one, two to one, to kick off this series. And I'm surprised Nasastelia didn't shoot it there with the time left, but nevertheless was not able to connect on that pass. It looked like he was going for Eagleson on that one. But like you said, just the pass not able to get there. And the defense of Frelunda carries them home in this game one win, two to one. As that late goal with 15 seconds left in the second period there from Loimu making the difference in this one. And man, oh man, if you're Havu, you're looking back at that and you're looking back at the two missed power plays in this third period. They had some chances, but the defense of Ferlunda, a few big saves from Kape, and unfortunately, Havu just not able to take advantage of some of those opportunities they have. And Ferlunda gets game one in this series in what was about what we expected, Tugi, a really close game, a lot of defense, and just a matter of taking advantage of chances when you got them. And again, that goal for Hans Salino still has to be incredibly frustrating to hit the inside of the pad. No uh, automatic butterfly there, but we get a look at the stats. And again, four for Lunda taking advantage despite the lack of time on attack as we'll get a look here one more time at the opening goal from Eki. Yeah, and remember, Eki just kind of put that one on net after the odd little bounce there. Is, it looks like it went through the right underarm there of Hans Salino from the looks of it there on that first one. Looks like he hit the inside of the blocker. Yeah, those two incredibly unfortunate goals against Han Salino. Uh, maybe tough to come back from. It is a seven-game series. It's only the first game, but I do wonder what exactly the mindset will be uh, heading into the rest of this matchup. I mean, that's a tough thing to try to shrug off if there's anybody that will have the mentality, you would think, to try and shrug that off, it would be someone as experienced as Hans Salino. But you could argue uh, hard-pressed by those first two goals, uh, to say the least. And unfortunately, it was enough for Forlunda to get the win. Again, everybody, Game 2 coming up in just a few moments. We'll be back to set the stage. Let's get you a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. All right, everybody, we are back again. Tuki here, joined by Mr. B Major as we continue on with our opening round coverage of the ECL Elite Division postseason. Again, you just witnessed game one with Frolunda taking the one to nothing series lead over Havu. Game two coming up in just a few moments. And again, a little bit later on in this broadcast, fourth seed Feriestad take on the five seed in IQ to round out the at least first two games of all of our series here. Again, we will have continued coverage over the next two days as well. Same start time, I believe, for all of that. And if not, hey, we'll update you on all of our socials. But it should be 1945 CET. That's about 1.45 p.m. Eastern for those of you on the North American side of things. I see a few of you in the chat. Thank you very much for joining us here today. So as mentioned, heading into this matchup here, you know, the mentality game's a big thing, and we've seen it pointed out in the chat as well. There was kind of a moment there at the end where maybe just not as sharp as you'd want somebody to be. You know, the race for the puck maybe could have given them a few more seconds to work with at the end for Havu. Again, those two goals, uh, really tough to blame Han Salinho on that. I mean, we got a second look at that first Eki goal. And it just looked like it went through him. You know, it looked like it hit the blocker on the far side and just bounced in. And then that second goal, obviously, off the inside of the pad and in. Uh, I'm intrigued to see what we see from Havu here. Maybe a little bit more of a willingness to throw the puck on net. Because especially down the stretch, at least what I noticed, was those around the back and behind the net plays for Havu started getting snuffed out a little bit more by Forlunda. Yeah, and for London, that's that's what's so fun with these two teams matching up. They've met each other so many times. There's so many games between them. You kind of know what to expect more times than not. Not many things are going to throw one another 
off guard. We knew that Havu kind of valued that possession game more times than not. They didn't have more than nine shots in either of the two games that they played in the regular season, despite having three minutes or more of time of attack in both games. So Havu typically dominates that possession game, but they don't really get a lot of shots on that, and that kind of can sometimes minimize the amount of opportunities that you get themselves. This time for Ferlunda, it went to their advantage. Havu maybe switching up the strategy in this one. Maybe you see them throw a few shots on that, because really... That's where both of Ferlunda's goals came from. It wasn't on a set play, more or less, but just throwing the shot on net, getting that bounce that happened to go their way, and the puck went in the net. So maybe Havu kind of takes a page out of their book on that one and gives themselves a few more opportunities based off of the shot before kind of valuing that behind-the-net cycling base play. Well, and you would have seen it there from the player builds as well. Of course, the uh, meta fully intact. A lot of puck-moving defensemen, a couple of playmakers, elite edges across the board. Uh, these guys love their possession game, to say the least, and doing their best to fully utilize that. Again, for Lunda, the 2-1 to -one win in game number one. Game two coming up here. Very intrigued to see what happens. We have yet to see a 1-1 split through the first two series that have begun here in the postseason. It will be Havu looking to change that. And again, remember, the rebrand is in effect. Sports Gamer GG and Evolution, if you would say. Of course, not just covering the NHL side of things now. It is Sports Gamer GG. That is Sports Gamer dot GG for all the uh, information that you need. Of course, not just here with our Elite Division, of course. But we mentioned it a little bit earlier on. Of course, the ongoing Pro Division playoffs and so much more. Sports Gamer dot GG as the second game of this series is underway. Havu in the uh, black and green. Falunda in the road. White's in a great opportunity for Dominoiti in the first 30 seconds of the game. Weagleson nearly with the interception there. Close calls for Falunda. And again, perhaps a little bit unfortunate for Havu as they do a good job to shut down that counterattack. See if they can get going here down the other way now. Flyer Kungan, the big spin. Billy Coon, nowhere to go. That puck, though, nearly found its way to a dangerous area. Uh, Castelia has it here again. Flyer Kungan tried to go back across. Great defense by Verlunda, but Havu certainly looking motivated. Heading into this game, pass across. Again, good defense there by Villikun to take it away. Playmaker's shot also knocked down by Villikun. Let's see what Havu can get going down the other way. It's been very difficult at times for them to break down the Verlunda blue line trap. Five of the best in the business in terms of shutting down that opportunity. But here is Dominoiti now with a bit of space to cut into the middle. Can't pick the puck back up. Close call there. Another great chance that just didn't quite fully develop for Havu. But man, you can kind of tell Havu playing with a lot of urgency coming into these first seven minutes and gotta give credit to Ferlanda, did a great job they did in game one, but you're seeing it er early in this first period as well shutting down passing lanes for Havu they've really tried to go for those cross passes and Ferlanda not giving it to them at all so far, but Havu looking very motivated here in the first few minutes you can tell they want this game too Big hit on Dominoiti, but Flyer Kungan able to hold it until he's back to his feet a little bit of contact there. One timer blocked down. I believe that banked off of Weagleson in front. A little bit of friendly fire is for Lunda. Trying to get going down the other way. Here's Tamu joining the rush. Potsloff went for that toe drag. If he had room to shoot, but again, Habu going to take that away. Big outlet pass now to Dominoiti. Eki right there to contest him. Flyer Kungan joins the fray. Eki able to maintain possession. Playmaker tried to hit him, but it is offside. Nearly halfway through this first period already. What a pace we've seen. Yeah, a lot more of a fast pace than what we saw really in all of game one. A lot of that game one felt like it was a lot of a feeling out period where opportunities were few and far between. It was a matter of capitalizing. Now we're just seeing chances all over the board really. And Havu really trying to make sure to get that first one on the board. You can tell what the aggressiveness they're playing with. There's Regelson again trying to get around Eki who's been more than willing. We've seen so far here tonight to drop back and let his defenders join the play. Havu now, though, slowing things down a little bit, knowing that they have to try and get Ferlunda to move a little bit. Otherwise, you run into a brick wall like Playmaker at the blue line. The puck is sent back. Ferlunda to get something going of their own here. Again, a very a few and far between have been their chances so far this period. That pass in front intercepted by Nostostelia. Big head of steam down the other way for the defenseman. Drops for Weagleson. Has Flyer Kungan tried to go back to Dominoiti. He was contested. 
Leads now to Forlunda, perhaps. Being able to generate a chance here. Pleamaker trying to hold on to a dangerous pass. Pays off to Tamu, who tries to go low, but Billy Kuhn was there to intercept that one. Now Sestelia, again, nowhere to go. Here's Eki, a little bit of space. That shot sneaks over the top. Thought it nearly went 5-hole with the camera angle. And with Han Salinas luck in game one, it wouldn't have been surprising for that to sneak 5-hole. Oh, man, if you heard something really quietly in the background, it was a sigh of relief from Han on that one. That was way too close for his liking. Loimu Temu saved by Han Salinio, and he'll be forced to make the cover what feels like a rare offensive zone draw for Perlunda. Yeah, we haven't seen many of those. Many of the offensive zone draws have been in favor of Havu, but now for London with a chance to win this faceoff and set up shop in the offensive zone. But keep in mind, Dominoiti, great on the faceoff dot this series. This is Villacoon now for Nasistelian again around the back of the net, looking for the opening goal of this game. And it was for Lunda striking first. Havu were able to tie it in the second period, but a late goal from Forlunda. From that man right there, Loimu was able to end up was able to hold up as the game winner by the end of it. We've hit the final minute of play here in the first period. On the back of the net though, Playmaker, great job on the four check. Eki joining the fray, loose puck, Dominoiti. To kind of hand that one off. They try the quick out. Three seconds to go. Flyer Kungum will win it. Gets to the forehand and front scores with point three to go in the first period. Havu have the breakthrough and take a one to nothing lead into the second. What a goal for Weagleson. I was very interested to see on how Flyer Kungan adjusted on that play. Looked like he might have had an Omaha-esque play. We know the NA knows all about that, but the pass a little bit towards to the bottom part of the board where he had to go get it with the race there and adjust compared to that normal type of breakaway play. He kept with it, stayed patient, waited for his fellow winger in Weagleson to come along there, passed it over across to him, and Havu opens the scoring up this time and it was that late period goal that eluded them in game one goes to their advantage in game two a huge moment there again the late entry opens up the pass in front a rare rare mistake from Berlunda and a one to nothing lead for Havu as a result as we get a look at the stats and uh wasn't the most offensive first period in the world yeah, and you kind of come to expect that really from the way that these two teams have played each other and the way that these two teams always play each other. You're not going to see these three to four, five to four games to where there's a lot of opportunities here and there and there was a lot of breakaways and high chance opportunities because the way that these two teams are so defensively based in the neutral zone, it's hard to establish that offensive zone time and to start to establish to really get in to give yourself chances. That's why in for Lunda for their win in game one, it was so important for them to capitalize because when the chances came, they were able to take advantage of them. So how were able to do it right there? They finally were able to get past the defense of for Lunda and they capitalized there. So now a one that they lead their first in the series, we'll see if they can hold on to it. Second period, a man down there at the line. It was for Lunda still mucking away for that puck, not able to come up with it. Again, the second game of this quarterfinal matchup, a 2-1 to -one win for Lunda in game one. And Ferriestad and IQ coming up after this. Still a lot more to see here on this broadcast. We thank you for joining us as Billy Kuhn takes that one away and threw it off the pads. Cape able to paddle that one aside. Nasustelia with a great keep there. See now what Flyer Kunga can do. He goes down low. Weagleson, the goal scorer, around the back. Back to Nasistelian, again down low for Havu. Dominoiti, a bit of a pause before getting over to that forehand side. Vili Kuhn tried to go back down low. Pleamaker was there to take it away, and here comes Zeki. Has Pleamaker with them. This time, though, at the line. A little bit of insult to injury there uh, for the likes of Flyer Kungan off of that hit. As you see, a big hit there as well, resulting in that injury. Yeah, that's something to look out for. Remember, that injury can kind of slow you down a little bit. And if I am correct, that is the defenseman there in Timu that took that injury. So we'll see if that has any effects here for Forlanda. But the way they have locked it down in the neutral zone, you would hope or assume that Havu probably not going to be able to take too much advantage of that. That pass off the mark gives Forlanda an opportunity to get things going down the other way. A good interception by Flyer Kunga only stops that. Rush temporarily as it's for Linda right back in control. And Asustelia 
Get him taken away, but Havu, uh, I guess more than more than just proved their defensive acumen. They keep turning the puck over after getting the steal. Dangerous moment there. Azaki knocks this one loose. It's still in the zone. Saved by Hanselino. And Havu need to figure out the passing here. They're playing with fire with this many turnovers. On their side of the ice. As that one off the skates will go all the way back. And Rolanda forced to reset. See what Potslav can do here. Now that pass off the mark. So, so difficult when these teams know each other as well as they do. Again, a, a, numer a multiple time, a, you know, numerous battles, but a multiple time championship final that we have seen. But again, we are fortunate enough to get it in the quarterfinals. We don't have to wait this year. Temu over the line. Potsloff, loose puck. He goes to the half wall, recovered by Loimu. Tries to go to the other side point where it's Playmaker covering. Now Temu for Aki, throws it across. I'll just tell you there, Playmaker, that one-timer. Blocked down from the point. Great stick lift there. I don't see too many people risking a stick lift. Worked out, uh, worked out perfectly on that attempt. But again, down the other way, they're contested. Habu trying to hold it in the attacking zone. Dominoiti and Wiggleson both there. Loimu is able to hold on to it. It finds its way to Eki. A little bit of trouble. Playmaker will dump that one into the far side. Giving Chase a great puck chop to keep that in the hands of Havu. Up the wall, Flyer, Kungan gets destroyed, but it was a little bit too early. We're going to have an interference call here against Hamu. Havu going back to the power play. Yeah, and I was thinking it right as he laid the body on on that one there too. He kind of looked like he was just a second early and stepped in there. Havu went 0 for 2 on the power play in that game one. Remember, a big difference in it being a 1-2 loss awesome, or potentially going an OT. We'll see if they can maybe adjust some things and right some of those differences here in game two and this time they have a lead so like a big chance for them to maybe extend that here they have under six minutes to go here in the second period flyer kungan gets the puck into the attacking zone dominoiti around the back for wiggleson again able to find dominoiti trying to keep that puck low as they so often do that shot big save by cafe wiggleson the rebound wanted the wrap shot by dominoiti is denied close calls but cafe able to stand tall so far on this penalty kill. Yeah, you kind of feel that this is almost a big PK here for Rolanda. For You're down one to nothing. It's been a defensive game. Opportunities have been few and far between. If Hobbin can score on this one with the way this game goes, got to assume maybe, just maybe, it could be enough to take it all the way home. But a lot of games still to play. A block shot there leads to a zone clearance. 25 seconds remaining on the Havu man advantage. Dominoiti. Able to gain the line, sends it around the back. The quick give and go doesn't work. Dominoiti got it back, but a great last second poke check takes that one away. Loimu has it here. We are back to five on five. Another missed opportunity for the Habu power play. As the major mentioned, struggling in the regular season by the standards they have set in the past and still struggling here in the postseason so far. We have under three minutes to go now. Here is Flyer Kungan. He gains the zone. Hands off for Wiggleson. Sends it all the way around and out of the reach of two Havu players. They'll be forced to reset from their own zone. For Lunda keeping a much higher line this time out. It is leading to Havu getting a little bit of extra space to work with here on these break-ins. As Flyer Kungan nowhere to go. Loyman. Trouble getting that outlet, uh, outlet pass, though. Potzla finally gets it, and again, he has trouble as well. Here's Nasustelia trying to generate some speed. Good hip check to win it back. Just couldn't get the shot off. Three seconds to go. Loimu will kill the clock. Havu will carry a one to nothing lead into the third period. Yeah, and Havu kind of just doing what they needed to there in that second period, not allowing for London to get a really lot of high octane opportunities and kind of getting some zone time here themselves. We knew this was going to be one of those one goal close battles as the golden helmet drops on the ice right there. But nevertheless, Havu just kind of doing what they need to to hold this lead. They're playing well defensively. And once again, their play style and being able to hold that time of possession goes to their advantage when they have the lead for London, not really able to establish that zone time. When they do, they do get themselves opportunities. So we'll see how that kind of balances itself out because now for London is going to be the one chasing the game here, going into the third period of game two while they were on the opposite end of this in game one. So we'll see how this shakes out. Should be a lot of fun, but Havu, if they can hold on to this, they would love to tie this series one to one and go in with really turning this into a best of five here in games three. And indeed, we will see this series continued tomorrow on broadcast, so look forward to that. 
No word yet on what the other matchup will be. It might just depend on the situation between IQ and Fairy Stad, which again we'll see a beginning. Uh, the first two games of that series will begin on the conclusion of this one. It is for Lunda in the attacking zone here early on. That one goes all the way back. Again, elite division action brought to you by our friends at Kovalon Lockritzi. Phil Helman, SD Hockey, a little bit of trouble there as Kape is forced to cover the puck. Yeah, and Kape having to be near perfect from this point forward. You would assume, like we said, a low scoring game, not a lot of chances. If Havu gets this next goal, got like the chances. So Kape gonna have to make some big saves and answer the bell here throughout this third period. Wire Kungen causing havoc in the uh, Forlunda zone. They are able to get this puck out. Loimu over the line. A little bit of trouble. Wiegelson, though, has it for Havu. Big step up doesn't work. Here goes Wiegelson one more time down that left hand side. Tries to go back to the point. Dominoiti gets it there. Trouble perhaps for Nasustelia. He finds Wiegelson shot on. Stopped by Cape. Might have been poked off of his stick. It looked like he maybe wanted to make one extra move and just ran out of time. Yeah, and that's kind of a big play there for Forlunda because, of, like we said, if Havu gets that, got to like their chance. So whether it was a save by Kape or a defensive play by one of Forlunda's defensemen, that is a big-time play there made by Forlunda. So if they come back and tie this game, bookmark that one. That may have been the one to make the difference. It's trouble here for Villikun. Great job to avoid that double-team pressure. Dominoit, he ends up for Flyer. Kungin, great catch by the center fielder in Loimu, but it is still Havu in on the attack around the back of the goal loose puck in front recovered it's for Lunda going down the other way playmaker a bit of space pass back across broken up by the defense of Havu breakout pass I should say for Wiegelson thought it was going to be on the mark just skipped past him dump and chase attempt here the chop down low out of the reach of playmaker and another power play coming up this time though it will be for for Lunda their first of the game it's the captain Going to the box for Havu. Just got too much contact on this second player. A bit incidental, but he has to take a seat for it regardless. And this is huge because for Lunda, number two in the league in the regular season on the power play at 27.79%. Havu, 79.31. They were around ninth, so this is going to be a huge chance here for for Lunda to tie this game up. Great set play off the draw. Just out of the reach, though, on that far side. Again, for Lunda's first power play of this game, miscommunication with Temu. That puck goes all the way back down. And Forlunda will be forced to reset again. Still looking for their first goal of this game. Here's Potsloff. Down low in the corner now, Eki around the back of the net. Very dangerous spot for him to be. He tries to go back to the point, maybe not, but it ends up on Temu's stick regardless. Potsloff back for Loimu. Temu shot save and that rebound skips behind the back of the goal, Nasustelia. Completely fans on the clear, likely poked and nearly held in by Tamu. I gotta be honest, I thought he kept that in. Yeah, that was a really close call, but the stripes disagree on that one. So now 11 seconds for Forlunda. This could be a huge faceoff here if they can get in the zone and maybe establish something. If not, Havu probably gonna dump this one down and get back to five on five. And here we go. The power play continues for a few moments. We are back to five on five. Halfway through this third period, Eki shot, rebound was there off the deflection pin from Playmaker. Another dangerous turnover for Havu in their own zone. Right back on the attack though, Flyer Kugan down low for Dominoiti. He does have space, holds it on the forehand. Back to the point, D to D. Now Sestelia, that shot from Flyer Kugan. Wiegelson still has it, knocked loose. Last moment by Loimu. The problem in this matchup, you think you have a little bit of space, disappears very quickly. Playmaker looking to step in, throws it in front, banks around to the far side, a shot there, perhaps buffered. Still found its way into a dangerous area. Eki for Loimu, that shot blocked by his own man in front. Eki shot stopped by Han Salino. What a quick feed from Playmaker below the goal line. That's what Forlanda is so good at. They have so much cohesion as a unit of five. They're so good at being able to get those quick passes off. So important against a team like Havu, where you can create some space for yourself and get a quick opportunity and use that to your advantage. Faceoff's much closer in this matchup. Dominoiti nowhere to go on that pass. Icing is the call. The big faceoff in the Havu zone. Forlanda looking to take advantage. Looking to get that first goal of the game. We five. haven't seen Havu. Oh, sorry. My no, that's cool. I was going to say, yeah. just 542 to play. It's insane that we're down to this low of time. Yeah, and I was going to just kind of say, this is where the defense in their own zone for Havu becomes so, so big. We've seen them do most of their damage 
in the neutral zone for London not able to establish a lot of time. Now we'll have to see if they can kind of hold their own here while Forlunda gets some of that pressure in the offensive zone. This is a big 5-15 for the defense and goaltender. And one timer they score! Loimu able to get the pass over to Tamu, I believe, if not just outright Tamu from the point. Forlunda have their goal, and indeed it is Tamu. Thought Loimu got a piece of that as well, but right off the draw, finally they're able to capitalize, and we're tied at one. It was right on time there, Tuki. We said, can Forlanda maybe get one in? And can Havu hold on with this being really the first time that we've seen them establish that consistent offensive pressure? Well, they kept at it. They kept going. They kept digging. And it was Timu on that one to capitalize. Now, two to three goals from defenseman for Forlanda. And we may be seeing some extra hockey, but we still got about four minutes of change to go to see if Havu or Forlanda can win this in regulation. Heartbreaker for Havu, but again, you play with fire, you're going to get burned. You allow too many offensive zone draws. Forlunda will find the breakthrough this time again. It was Tamu, as mentioned a moment ago. Loimu had a goal in game number one, held up as the game winner. Two and a half minutes to play. Here in this third period, it is a, a brand new game, now tied at one apiece. Potsloff went to that backskate to try and maintain possession, but it ends up back in the Forlunda zone. See what Loimu can do being pressured by Wigglesen. That pass off the mark. Tamu will get a chance now to lead this breakout, perhaps. Good outlet pass to Potsloff. Cuts inside. Makes the move. Playmaker scores! With 52 seconds to go, Fralunda grab the lead. It's 2-1. to one. Oh, and what a difference that five minutes makes, Tugi. Technically, about two or three in real life minutes here. For Lunda, from down one to nothing, Havu playing so well defensively to all of a sudden they get the ripper on the offensive faceoff from Timu to tie it up. And a beautiful move from Potsloff may not have connected, but how about Playmaker going to the net, following the play, being in position, right place, right time, to scoop it up, take advantage, and put the puck in the net. A heartbreaker for Havu if they cannot come back in the next 40 to 50 seconds. The playmaker special on that goal. Nothing Hanselino can do in that situation. Out of nowhere, Verlunda struggling to score. They now have a 2-1 to -one lead in the final minutes of regulation. All the pressure on Havu. Let's see what they can do here. They still have time to work with, but this is a very frustrating situation for them. I am sure so close yet so far. Maybe being able to get a win here and tie the series up heading into the action tomorrow. Playmaker has it. Gets it over to Eki. Able to game the zone. Sends it around the back. Playmaker has to back off. Villiku now 30 seconds for Havu. Puck into the offensive zone. That shot. Playmaker fighting for it. Double teamed. Eki's there as well. Kicks out to the center where Potsloff is able to get it to Playmaker. He'll send it down. No icing. Hanselino going to head to the bench. It is Havu, one of the more aggressive teams. Eki forces the turnover. Ball game for Lunda. We'll take game two and a two to nothing series lead into the action tomorrow. We were waiting to see when Eki got his first goal of the series. We didn't think it would be on an open net. But yet here we are, Tugi, and wow, what a comeback from Fralanda. They were down by one five minutes to go, and you just never give up if you are Fralanda. We've seen just about everything with these two, and there is no different here in game two in round one. Three to one, the final score. Fralanda, a two to nothing series lead here in this opening round matchup of the ECL Elite Division playoffs it wasn't pretty for the vast majority of this game all that matters though is the scoreboard at the end yeah and i think Ferlanda will go home plenty happy with the two to nothing series lead they have and at the end of the day that is the score that matters that series and man oh man if you were Havu, you have to feel absolutely gutted after leading most of this game, getting that late goal in the first period, playing so well defensively, especially in the neutral zone throughout this game, and then in the last five minutes, Verlanda just turned it on, flipped the switch, and took over in this game too. And man, if Verlanda wins this series, which they are on a pretty good track to going up two to nothing, 
this is the game I think that we remember and say this is where Forlunda won it and where Havu kind of lost it. They had that lead. They only had four shots and the defense just not able to hold off long enough to stave away that that, you know, inevitable Forlunda run. And for them, it came in the last five minutes. They took advantage of their chances and they get the win because of it. As you see on the score bug there in the right-hand corner. Now at the bottom of the screen, a 2 to nothing lead in this best of seven for Forlunda. If there's any team that can adapt and battle their way back into a series, it is Havu, but that is now three out of three series that we have seen started here in the quarterfinals that have a two to nothing series lead. We have one more series that needs to get underway, and you will see that on the other side of our brief intermission. It will be the start of IQ and Feriastad. Very much looking forward to seeing how this series continues tomorrow. Uh, but final thoughts on what was, all things considered, a great performance from Forlunda to be able to get those two to nothing, uh, you know, the two to nothing series lead here. Yeah, for London game one, they kind of just took advantage of their chances. They got that first goal and kind of just rolled that out from that point on. Some unfortunate bounces, unfortunately, for Havu. And really not a lot that Hanselino could do really about any of the goals that he let in between the two games. A lot of them just kind of odd bounces and really just kind of clear-cut opportunities. It was either one or the other. And then obviously that last goal from Eki being open net. But nevertheless, I think if you're Havu... You, you kind of have to feel a little bit, like I said, gutted, I think is the word you kind of have to use there. You could have very well have won game one. You had some unfortunate bounces go your way, and then you're leading the vast majority of game two, and then with five minutes left, Forlunda just woke up and really were able to become a different team in terms of how long they were able to apply pressure. And unfortunately for Avu, they're going to go down 2 nothing in this series. They have their work cut out for them. But if anyone is built to come back from a deficit like this against a team they know so well, it would be Avu. So cannot get cocky if you're Forlunda. They know how to take care of business. Should be fun to watch this series develop as Forlunda leads this one 2 nothing after those two games. Again, on the other side of our intermission, we will begin our fourth and final quarterfinal matchup, Fairstad and IQ. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.